Praise the Lord, everybody. Let there be light. Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. Would you clap your hands to the Lord tonight? Give God glory in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Oh, come on. We need to worship God tonight in spirit and in truth. We need to call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we need to worship God. Amen. Now we need to worship God. Amen. I said, now we need to worship God. Amen. The patty caking was nice. Amen. But why don't we truly worship God in this house? Why don't we give God glory in this place tonight that he truly deserves? Hallelujah. Oh, I worship you, Lord. Come on, we're not going any further until the worship picks up in the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. This is the glory. This is the place where the power falls. This is the anointing. This is where God saves people. This is where miracles, signs, and wonders take place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Woo, I feel the presence of the Lord coming on. I feel the glory in this house tonight. Woo, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord as they begin to sing. To this house, magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands.
melody Sing unto the Lord He has given us into this house and magnify the Lord for he is worthy for he is worthy oh I may not feel like it but he's worthy I may be going through my feels right now but he's still worthy my feelings may be hurt tonight but guess what he's still worthy I may have come into this house sick tonight but guess what he's still worthy to be praised in this house. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God in this place. Tonight's a night of miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. Some of y'all don't believe that right now. I see it come across your face. That's okay. Amen. I've been in services where it could be just dead, and it's not dead. Amen. But I feel the presence of God in this house. Brother Mike, I want you to come up here and stand right there. Brother Dennis, I want you to come and stand right here. Amen. I'm looking for some miracles tonight. And they're going to give a testimony of what God has done in their body. Amen. When he heals their body. Amen. Will you give a testimony if God heals you? You'll give it, won't you? Amen. I know you will. I seen this man run for the first time the other day. He got the feeling that, whoo, ha, ha, ha. And God's about to heal Brother Dennis's mouth, his jaw. Amen. We're going to shock the doctors. Anybody, I love just blowing doctors' minds. I love blowing their minds. See, I've had them come to me before and say, I don't understand it. Here you got it. And here you don't have it. This is what the x-rays and all that showed, and I don't understand. I said, well, doctor, let me tell you exactly what happened. God healed me. He looked at me like I was crazy, and he said, uh, you, you can believe that if you want to. I said, I do believe it, because I know, I know what my God can do. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. I feel like doing an Indian dance or something. I don't know what I'm feeling. Woo! I, feel, I tell you what I'm feeling. I'm feeling the power of the Holy Ghost in here. Brother Coots, I want you to come. Amen. Is there anybody else? Sister, I want you to come. You got rheumatoid arthritis. I want you to come. Tonight's going to be a night's going to blow your mind, church. Amen. God's about to do something. Woo! God's about to heal. Sister Ari, I want you to come. I want you to stand right there. Amen. I am sick of sickness. I can stand up here half horse with bronchitis and still tell you that my God's a healer. Why he ain't totally touched me yet, I don't know, but I know one thing. He can when he's ready. And he has done it to me before. I've watched broken bones healed. I've watched ulcers totally healed. I've watched blood cancer dried up. I've watched heart attacks healed. I've watched people raised from the dead. Yeah, look right there. I say I watched my own grandmother die before my very eyes. The preacher went over and laid hands on her. And in about five minutes after praying, all of a sudden she shook herself. She had been pronounced dead by the nurse that was in the church. Don't tell me my God can't heal. Ooh. Just as that, I like that. Boom, 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 boom. Just as they're playing that little bit right there. Amen. God's power is reverberating in this place. 
God's healing is in this house tonight. Anybody else sick in their body? Anybody else need healing tonight? Another one. Amen. Here comes another. If you need healing, come on to the front. That's all I got to say. Sister, you, we're coming to you. Sister Hudson, I'm tired of the devil that's come against you. The oppressing sickness. It ain't right for God's people to be sick. It ain't right for God's people to be sick. Before we pray, I've got a laundry list. Debbie Mivalis, Sister Saint's cousin has cancer. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Brother Dwayne Hart, my friend, if you're watching, we're praying for you. Brother Della Fuente, I love you. We've never given up. Amen. Brother Miller, hang in there. Sister Sanctus, hang in there. Sister Laura Melanson, I know you got the flu, but hang in there, my friend. God's your healer tonight. Sister Sandra Frouchy, hang in there. God ain't finished yet. Jesslyn Sharp, you got the flu. Bless your heart, baby. But God's going to heal you tonight. Woo! Now, while God's in the healing business tonight, I want you to, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo! I want you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Tomorrow, Ramadan ends. That's a Muslim holiday. And they're saying they're going to attack Israel. We need to pray for God's people. While you're praying tonight, I want you to pray a hedge of protection that every missile that comes from Iran and all the proxies of Iran, they will fall in utter defeat. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Tomorrow's going to be a day of miraculous uh, testimony. Tomorrow's going to be a day of power and glory. Tomorrow, people are going to say, my God, I was healed. I was healed at that church. I remember pastor saying, pray. And we prayed. Woo. Special unspoken all across here. Raise your hand. I want every minister. Brother, I want you to come here. I want you to come up. Brother, I want you to come help me. All right, I want you to go to every person that's standing here in ministry, and we're going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. And God's about to heal your legs, your knees. God's going to touch his mouth. I want God to touch you, Sister Aria, whatever it is. And God knows, okay? Amen. God's going to heal this arthritis. Tomorrow's going to be a brand new day. Are you ready for a brand new day? My God, heal this woman. Lord, let healing virtue take place right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command sickness to leave her body. I command the oppressing spirit to of sickness to leave in Jesus' name. Leave her now. God, I pray right now, Lord. I rebuke this migraine headaches in the name of Jesus. Lord, let healing virtue flow upon my sister in the name of the Lord. God, touch Aria right now that she'll never be the same again. Lord, let healing come to her in Jesus' name. Come on, Sister Aria.
are victorious. You are mighty. You are omnipotent. There is none that can compare. You are holy. You are, holy. You are righteous. You are magnificent. You are victorious. You are mighty. You are omnipotent. Praise the Lord. If you, as you return back to your seat tonight, uh, amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of glorious praise. Oh, I want to sing unto the Lord. Amen. There is something about inspiration. It's God breathed. There's something about being on fire for God. There's something about effectual, fervent prayer that changes and does much. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know what it's like to get up at dark 30 and work till dark 30. I know what it's like. I promise you I do. Did it most all my life. Still do it. And there is times that I've been so exhausted and so tired that I didn't feel like doing it. And I knew that preacher was going to get up there after eating bonbons all day and sleeping all day. I knew he was going to do it. He was going to make me worship. Boy, did I learn all that stuff about right. But I knew it was for my own good. When you can make this old hard-headed, stinking flesh say, you know what? You can sleep when you get out of service. Amen. As for me, I've come to worship God. I'm going to get something out of the service tonight. It might just be the healing that I need is so bad. It might just be the answered prayer that I have asked God for so long. I was working on the land today, and three days ago, you heard about, I piled up old sticks and stones and all that stuff, and just a big old pile, and, and that stuff was dead today. I mean, it was dead. It was cold. I pulled it all together, though, got it all in the same spot. Three days. I felt like saying, Lord, is that you? <laughs> In one way it could have been. Because the Lord was showing me something. We 
when you come together. <laughs> when you come together, you've been out there, you might be cold, and you might have even been carnal. Bless your heart. You might not have prayed since last Sunday. And you've had a rough time. But I want you to know if we can push the coals together tonight. If we can just get them together tonight. Woo! Something's about to happen in this place. There's a fire fixing to catch up in here. It's Holy Ghost fire. It's fixing to move in this place tonight. And I looked out there a couple of hours later. I mean, I had big old pieces of wood, that big around, that tall, huge, 100 something pounds. And that fire got so hot in hours, all of it was burnt to the ground. Nothing. God will burn out your dross tonight. God will burn out your impurities and your impure thoughts and the things that's been bothering you and, and hanging on you. Woo, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but God's talking to you. You have come to the right place tonight. Push together. Press down. Shaking together and running over is the Holy Ghost that will move in your life. Woo, my, my, my. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Brother Howard, it's about ripe. Amen. And ready for the word. Amen. I am excited to have Brother Howard here tonight. And Sister Howard. Amen. And little Howard. Amen. We'll quickly go through the announcements. God bless you. you may be seated. April 7th, that's this Sunday at 2 p.m. Evangelist Justin Leva will be here with us. Amen. He's a, a, a awesome man of God. We're looking forward to the for them being here. Prayer is at 1.30 p.m. Please be here in the prayer room and fire up the prayer room. Amen. I want this church to be a house of prayer. Amen. A time of prayer. We need to, whenever, when service starts, that should really be your second wind. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Anybody ever been a runner? Amen. You first start out, what is it? You, you feel kind of cold, right? You kind of, ugh. You got to get going. You gotta, you're not warmed up good yet. Amen. But you get that second wind, and all of a sudden, man, you stride. You mean you're kicking it, man. Amen. That's the way it should be at 2 o'clock on Sundays. Amen. Don't come up in here thinking uh, I'm going to start when, when church starts. No, you're, you're already way behind. Prayer, pre-service prayer is so important to the church. Amen. You should be getting your second wind. Amen. Brother Coots gets up in here in this pulpit. Uh, he ain't here trying to, 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 to push the bellows. Amen. Trying to pump you up. Praise the Lord. He's here for, to worship God just like you are. Hallelujah. April 27th, Saturday. April 28th, Sunday. Lamps Conference with Sister Corson. Amen. Anybody wants to come, but it is for the ladies, right? Saturday is the ladies' night. Okay, so men don't come up here. Praise God. If you want to, praise God. What time does it start? Okay, prayer, pre-service prayer, 7. <clears throat> okay, 6.30. Okay, service starts at 7 that night. All right. Okay, outreach teams, you asked for it, you got it. Amen. I worked on it today. I prayed about it. I put them down. We have five different outreach teams so excited. I know that God's going to use this and for his glorious kingdom. It is posted in the back. If you put your name out there on that list, amen, I put your name, you're in a team back there somewhere in that back room there, amen, and if you have not, then uh, because you ask not, praise the Lord. So I want you to ask, amen, and, and you can even write your name on, if you haven't got on a team yet and you want to, uh, please see me and I'll put you on a team. Praise the Lord. I, I really have prayed about this. I'm so excited. It won't be long. We should be hearing back soon from the city about our first uh, our, our date that we're going to start out there. I am so ready to see the bulldozers out there getting after it. Amen. We're so excited. It's not going to be long, church. Amen. We're going to have a brand new church, and it's going to be so wonderful. Four brand new big Sunday school rooms, and it's just going to be awesome. Not only that, they're going to put 
a storage above all the Sunday school rooms. They're building a storage room facility above that. So it's going to be wonderful. We're going to have it, it a seat uh, 288, or but uh, with the with the way it's set, we could set out hundreds of chairs. It's going to be wonderful. Praise the Lord. So I'm excited about what God is doing. Thank you for, for giving in the building fund, and we're looking forward to wonderful, wonderful services in the future. Amen. <laughs> also in the back bulletin board at the church, you might want to check it. Uh, I took the liberty of assigning some that have never taught before on Tuesday night, and your name has been added. Praise the Lord. Amen. Surprise, surprise. Amen. So you're going to be excited, and uh, we're looking forward to, I love Tuesday nights. We had a great time Tuesday nights, a great time of prayer and relaxation and Bible study and uh, question and answers time, and it's just a really great time. How many enjoyed Sunday service? How many, in Resurrection Sunday, how many enjoyed that? Wasn't that great? Thank you so much for making it happen. Amen. We had, a, how many did we have, sister? It was 172, something like that. I believe it's about 172. So thank you for inviting your friends and family. What a great, great time. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> this time we're going to take up the offering if the ushers would come. Dear Lord, we're so thankful to be in your presence. We're so excited about what you've already done in this house tonight, Lord. We're looking forward to the word of God. It's about to go forth soon, Lord. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's here tonight and those that may have to give and those that may not, Lord. I pray that you bless them equally and we give you glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you as you bring tithes and offerings to the front tonight.
Brother Coots, I want you to just reach above you and do this. Amen. I just seen blessings above your head. Amen. Amen. You get ready because God's fixing to blow your mind what's fixing to happen for you. Woo, I just see blessings for you in the name of the Lord. Woo, my God, my God. I'm telling you, living for God is the best thing you've ever had in your life, my friend. When you live for God, there ain't nothing that's better than this. Woo, my God. He takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for good for you. You don't understand why. But God says, trust me and see the salvation. See what I promise you. You got to believe the promise maker. And you got to believe that he's able to meet all of those promises that he made to you. The Bible's full of promises. You mean the Bible's full of promises? There is something special in here tonight. My God, my God. Brother Howard, I want you to come on. Amen. I'm excited about my son in law. Amen. I love him. I'm so glad to have him here tonight. Amen. I know you're going to be blessed with Brother Jeremy Howard. He's a great man of God. He loves God. He's a humble man. And I'm glad he's my son. Amen. I, I don't have but two son in laws, and that's Victor and Jeremy. Praise the Lord. So y'all pray for me. Amen. Amen. I love them both, though. And I'm glad that God is using this young man. Amen. To, to preach the word of God. Amen. Would you make welcome Brother Jeremy Howard tonight? Amen. Let's continue that hand clap to the Lord tonight. Amen. for what I feel in this place tonight. There's a many places that you could be tonight. There's a many other churches that you could be at tonight. And you're not guaranteed to feel what you feel in this place at those places. You are a blessed people. I said you are a blessed people. So thankful to be here tonight. It is an honor and a privilege, even though he may be my father in law, I still respect him as the pastor of New Life Pentecostal Church here in Liberty. I give him honor tonight. To my mother in law, the first lady of this church, I give her honor as well. What a dynamic set of people that you have to lead you and to lead this church into what God desires to do not only in this city but in this region, in this state, in this nation. I believe the reach of this little church is not going to be little for long. I said it ain't going to be little for long. But I believe the reach of this church will reach far beyond the county lines of liberty. It will reach beyond the state lines of Texas. God will make a way where it will go beyond the nation of America. There's going to be untold people we won't know till we make it to heaven how many people and, and where people were impacted because of a man of God and his wife that when the naysayers said it'll never happen, when people rose up and tried to stop 
what he knew God was telling him to do. It's because of his perseverance and his trust and belief in God that there will be great and mighty reports in heaven of what has transpired beyond where we will ever see. Because of your faithfulness, because of the faithfulness of the people here tonight, God is going to do great mighty things in you and through you. Amen. I want to thank God for my beautiful wife. I know she's here way more often than me. You see her on the regular, assisting her parents in music and, and helping with whatever she can do behind the scenes. I'm so thankful for her. I give her honor tonight. And I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost that I feel in this place. Your pastor could have just went ahead and preached the second he opened service when he began to talk about miracles, signs, and wonders. He could have just went ahead and preached. Uh, there was no need for me because he was in tune with what God would want to say tonight. And I'm going to endeavor to unload the word that I feel tonight to this body. I promise you that he had no idea about what God had laid upon my heart to preach. I didn't even know what I was going to preach this until Tuesday. I'd already had a message prepared and I felt that was the direction to go. Tuesday night we have service at Apostolic Temple in Pasadena where we, where we go. And I was asked to lead service. and I was sitting there on the platform as the man of God began to preach. Toiling in my, my mind and in my spirit, God, is this really the word that you would have? And God responded at that very moment on Tuesday night just two days ago this is what you're going to say this is what you're going to preach to my people I come to you tonight as a forerunner for what God is about to do in this church it's my hope tonight that after you hear the word you would prepare yourself and position your life to be not only in unity with the pastor and the leadership of this church, but to align your life to God and his word to see the promises of God fulfilled in this hour. This hour. This is the generation. He's already talking about what's going to transpire on the other side of the world possibly tomorrow. Our time is short. I know there's people in here that's been serving God a lot longer than me. They've been in the church a lot longer than I have. And they've heard it all their life. He's coming back for people who has made their calling and their election sure. I've only been in this since I was the age of five. So you can do the math. I'm 33. And I've heard it all my life. Ready yourself. Be prepared. The coming of the Lord is nigh. My, oh, my, if you would see the signs, if you would look up and see the signs and realize that our time is short, then the word tonight should be able to prick each and every heart and each and every life in this place. I haven't come with a word that's going to cause uh, anguish. It, it, it's not going to cause fear. I've come to uplift you tonight. I've come to inspire faith inside the body of Christ that your greatest days have yet to come. Come on, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the greatest miracles that you've ever seen have yet to come. Come on, he hit the nail on the head when he began to say there are miracles in this place. There's signs, there's wonders that's going to transpire. Your greatest days are ahead of you, new life. And I've come to charge you and uplift you by the Word and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost that it's time for you to begin to mix your faith with the man of God. 
Come on, when he begins to speak about miracles, when he begins to speak about healings, when he begins to speak about signs and wonders, there shouldn't be a pair of feet that's not jumping up and down in agreement with the word and with the pastor saying, I believe God. I believe God. I believe it's on the way. And I'm going to see it for myself. God, I got got to hurry. I I know it's been a long day for everyone in this place, so we're going to quickly get to the word of the Lord. Drawing your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, and we're going to read down through verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 10. And I, brethren, when I come to you, come not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I have determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak with wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world knew, for had they known it, they would, have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered to the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Drawing your attention back to verse 9, But as it is written, I hath not seen, I hath not seen, I hath not seen. If I can endeavor to preach tonight what God had put placed upon my heart, and if we have any English scholars in the house, please excuse me, because you have a country boy from Kentucky. I know I'm in Texas, so I mean... English really ain't uh, all too important to a lot of us. Proper English, might I say. But I come to you with this thought tonight. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, just for a few more moments, why don't you clap your hands to the Lord? Make room for the word tonight. That's it. I already feel the Spirit of God already beginning to settle on some of you people. Come on, because you may have seen a few things that God has done. You may have seen him do a few miracles and a few signs and a few wonders. But I'm coming to you tonight under the auction of the Holy Ghost. To let you know, you ain't seen nothing yet. You can be seated in this house tonight. There are 37 miracles that are recorded in the four Gospels 
of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm going to name each and every one of them. Some of them I will stop and I will read the happening of them because there are some insights inside of those recordings that I want to bring out and I want to, to convey to you at the best of my ability tonight. The first miracle we all know is Jesus turns water into wine. And you can see, you, you can read about this in John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And I'm going to reference all the writings from each and every person Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm not going to read them all. Trust me, I'm, I'm trying to get you out of here. We'll be here all night. But I'm going to make reference to where you can find these stories if you would like to go and read them for, them, for yourself. Amen. Jesus heals the nobleman's son in John chapter 4, verses 46 through 53. And this one says, so Jesus again, Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water into wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he had heard that Jesus was come of, Je of Judah into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him. And he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will believe not, ye will not believe. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. I'm sorry, I skipped one. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere or before my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour which, when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. Verse 53, So the father knew that it was at the same hour in that which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. <laughs> Jesus calls out the noble man's unbelief and saying, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. For there to be miracles evident in the church, the church must believe. The greatest enemy, I know many people could go many different directions, but the greatest enemy of us seeing God perform miracles is our unbelief. Because even more so in this generation, except we see it before our very eyes, we won't believe. Except I see it made manifest in front of me. I'm, that's what Jesus told the nobleman. Except ye see the signs and the wonders, ye believe not. The church has to believe in this hour. There cannot be unbelief in the church. There cannot be one ounce of unbelief inside of our spirits. There has to become a spirit on the inside of us that says, God, because of your word, I know that you are able. I may have not seen it with my eyes. I'm not going to be like the nobleman and, and have unbelief because I don't see the signs. I don't see the wonders. Uh, but God, I'm going to cleave to your word. I'm going to cleave to the examples that you've given in your word that I can believe that God is able to perform a miracle in this hour. Jesus cast out an unclean spirit from a man in the synagogue in Luke Chapter 4, verses 31 through 37. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who art who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. 
And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits. And they came out. In verse 37 says, And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. The word has gotten out about new life in Liberty, Texas. And that is evident, maybe not tonight, because we have so many not here. But just this past Sunday, 172 souls were in this house. And that is evident with the amount of people that have been added to this church. i got to be honest, I wasn't here at the very beginning. But I remember that at one point there was only enough people to maybe fill one side of the sanctuary. It was in the beginning stages, in the infant stages of what God was going to do here. And that's still something that we should glorify God about. And I'm so thankful for what God is continuing to do here at New Life and Liberty. And I rejoice with you, even though I may not be here all the time. But when the fame of Jesus, as we read in the scripture, is noised abroad about a little old church in Liberty, Texas, that is not only seeking God with their whole hearts, but they are seeing notable miracles in every service. Come on, I was here the night that this brother right here left the cane on the ground. Come on, I seen it. It, it wasn't just a pro, it was a miracle. I don't know you, sir. I, I haven't been able to spend time with you. All I know is you've been that way for quite some time. But God stepped down that night. To, and he did the impossible. What man thought would never transpire. What a man thought would never happen to him in his entire life. God chose to step down in the midst of faith. In the midst of obedience to his word. And a miracle took place. I believe that can happen in every service. And when that happens, the fame of Jesus is going to be noised abroad. And you wonder why the prophets and the evangelists and the men of God come to this church and they say the plans that you've planted for the new church will not contain what God has in store for this church. It's because when we begin to put our eyes on him, when we begin to believe that he is able to do exceeding and abundant above what we could ever ask or think, the fame of God is going to spread. You will not contain it. You will not stop it. It's time if you're on the fringes of what God is trying to do in liberty. It's time for you to jump on with both feet and say, Pastor, I see the vision. Pastor, I see what God's trying to do and I want to be a part of it. It's no time to play patty cake. It's no time to pretend to have church. It's no time to pretend to have the power. It's time to be sold out. Because God's going to do what he said he's going to do. You can take it to the bank. The promises of God in him are yay and amen to them that will believe. You be seated. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law in Matthew chapter 8 verses 14 through 15. Mark Chapter 1, 29 through 31, and Luke, chapter 4, 38 through 39. Jesus heals many that are oppressed and sick in Matthew 8, 16 through 17. Mark 1, 32 through 34. Luke 4, 40 through 41. The first miraculous catching of fish by Simon Peter, Simon Peter, James, and John is recorded in Luke chapter 5, 1 through 11. 
Jesus cleansed a man of his leprosy in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Jesus heals the centurion's paralyzed servant in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. I know I'm going quick, but I want you to realize that it's been recorded. It's been recorded. It's not just some fairy tale that happened over 2,000 years ago. We have historical documents that says these transpired. There was eyewitnesses that saw it transpire. And I've come to tell new light tonight night that you are in the position to see history take place you are the eyewitness you are the one that's going to give an account when you go beyond the four walls and you tell your co-workers you tell your family you tell your friends guess what happened that new life down on Jefferson Street guess what transpired on Sunday guess what happened at my church you are going to be the eyewitness to the miraculous. Jesus tells the centurion's paralyzed servant in Matthew 8, 5, verses 5 through 10. And when Jesus had entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented, And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth that, doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Man, I hope Jesus can say this about me one day. I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go all thy way. And thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the selfsame hour. I believe and I agree with this pastor tonight that this is the house of miracles, signs, and wonders. But I also believe... That if there's a word that can be spoken from someone who has enough faith believing that if that person's in a hospital however so many miles away from this place the word can be spoken. Come on, it doesn't have to just transpire in front of this altar. God wants to work beyond the four walls of the church. But it takes someone who has faith believing that it doesn't take the man of God to lay his hands on them. It doesn't take the man of God traversing his way to where they are. If someone would just bring the need to the pastor, the man of God up front, and say, Pastor, there's a man. He's on his deathbed, and I believe Come on, it's going to take that amount of faith from the church that says if you can just speak the word of healing, if you can just speak the word of the miraculous, I know, I know he will be healed. It's not just going to transpire inside of this building. God wants the miraculous to be on the streets. He wants you to be in the highways and the byways. And he wants you to spread the gospel. He wants you to spread the good news. He wants you to spread his fame. Spread his fame throughout this whore. 
I believe today that if only the word can be spoken speak the word man of God just speak come on I feel it in my spirit right now some of y'all may know somebody. Hey, there, there was a, a, a slide of names that was posted upon this wall. There was a paper that Pastor read at the beginning of the service. A name of people who we need God to touch. I don't know their situations. I don't know where they're at or, or what's going on in their life. But he spoke the word. He spoke the word. And I believe healing went forth. You may even be listening online right now. If you'll just reach up and grab it by faith, you don't have to be in this auditorium tonight. The word's already gone forth. You just got to receive it in faith that God, it's mine. Jesus said unto the centurion, Thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. So we, do we believe that this is still true today? Do we really? If God hasn't changed, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, Hebrews 13 and 8. And if his word hasn't changed, then what is it that has made the word of none effect? I'm glad you, you asked that question tonight because it's tradition. Tradition. Tradition has caused us to not believe that it's still able, that the word spoken is still able to heal. Tradition has caused us to believe because we've gotten so wrapped up in our program. We've gotten so wrapped up in the order of the service that God can interrupt and he can't say, listen, I know you're here and I know what you need. And, and if you'll just push the agenda aside, if you'll begin to believe that my word is able to heal and able to restore and able, it's able to do anything that you so desire, but tradition has us handcuffed because it's not the order we usually do it it's not how things are usually done and, and we get so encapsulated in, in order and I believe things should be done the Bible says to be done decently and in order and I believe in order but I also believe in a God who will step down in the midst of your trouble when, when everyone else is just here on a Thursday night just going through the motions I believe that God can step down and he can break open the order of the service and say if you just allow the man of God to speak the word and believe I will perform that which I please Mark chapter 7 verse 13 says making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which we have delivered and many such like things do ye we've got to break tradition church <laughs> Like I said, they don't have to be. We want them here. Don't get me wrong. This man of God wants them, wants them here. This man of God desires for them. To, God desires for them to be here. But if we hold too fast to tradition, God's not able to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart's perfect towards him as the word of God says. God's not able to show the unbeliever that may never grace the, the threshold of these doors. He may not be able to show the unbeliever his true power, his true authority. Hey, it, it may be that when, you, when the word is spoken and the situation seems bleak and there's an unbeliever by that person and God's restoration power and his Healing virtue brings that person up. That may very well be the moment that the unbeliever begins to question and he begins to say, hey, who is this God that you serve? Who is this God that you serve? Where is this church that you speak of? If we hold fast to tradition of staying inside of the four walls, there may be a soul. There may be an unbelieving soul who's not willing to humble themselves to walk into those doors, there may be an opportunity for God to show himself 
and to make his fame known. Jesus heals a paralytic man who was let down through the roof. Chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Jesus heals a man's withered hand. Matthew 12, 9 through 14. Mark 3, 1 through 6. Luke 6, 6 to 11. Jesus raised a widow's son from the dead in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 17. Jesus calms a storm on the sea, Matthew 8, 23 through 27, Mark 3, 1 through 6, Luke 8, 22 through 25. Jesus casts demons into a herd of pigs in Matthew 8, 28 through 33, Mark 5, 1 through 20, and Luke 8, 26 through 39. Jesus heals the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 9, 20 through 22, Mark 5, 25 through 34, Luke 8, 42 through 48. Jesus raises Darius' daughter back to life in Matthew 9, 18, 18, then 23 through 26. Mark 5, 21 through 24, and also verses 35 through 43. And Luke 8, 40 through 42, and verses 49 through 56. Jesus heals two blind men, Matthew 9, 27 through 31. Jesus heals a man who is possessed and unable to speak in Matthew 9, 32 through 34. Jesus heals the impotent man in, at Bethesda in John 5, 1 through 15. I'm not just going over the recordings of these. These are what we should be believing God to do. Come on. These are the miracles that we want to see in our hour. I don't just want a recording of it. I just don't want to read what happened back before my time. I want to see them. And it's going to take a church that's hungry enough to say, God, I want to see it for myself. God, I want to see the blind eyed open. I want to see the dead raise the life. I want to see the dumb speak. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see all these for myself, Lord. It's going to take someone who's hungry. Jesus feeds the 5,000 plus, plus women and children in Matthew 14, 13 through 21, Mark 6, 30 through 44, Luke 9, 10 through 17, and John 6, 1 through 15. Jesus walks on the water in Matthew 14, 22 through 33, Mark 6, 45 through 52, and John 6, 16 through 21, and I'm hurrying. Jesus heals many sick. And they are touched with his garment in Matthew 14, 34 through 36, and Mark 6, 53 through 56. And Mark reads in Mark 6, 53 through 56. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. And they ran through the whole region around about and began to cry. I'm sorry, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whether so he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were out but the if it were but the border of his garment, as many as touched him were made whole. That shows you that God wants to do the, the miraculous outside of the sanctuary. They were lining the streets as the woman with the issue of blood, if they can just barely graze the hem of his garment. If I can but just barely touch Jesus, I know I will be made whole. God wants to do it in our streets, church. He wants to do it in our neighborhoods. Uh, he wants to do it in our homes. He wants to do it on our jobs. It, it's not confined to this building. Do you realize what the true church of God is? It's not a building. I know most of you know it, but I'm reminding you. I, I'm, I'm trying to enthrong you. I'm trying to redirect your vision. The church is not a building or a location. The church is you and me and you and you 
in you. You are the church. God wants the church to take church out of church. He's already spoken it. God confirmed it. He said, we're going to have an outreach team. We're going to go out. We're going to get church beyond the four walls. We're going to get the church out of the church building. And we're going to get out on the streets. And I believe it's not just going to be witnessing. I believe it's not just going to be handing out a track and say, would you come visit me? I believe that they can begin to learn the streets and they can say, hey, I see New Life United Pentecostal Church coming down the road and I've heard about what happens at their church services. Do you wonder if God can do that to me? Do you want, do you, do you know if God can do that in my life? But it's going to take someone with determination. It's going to take a church that's determined to get the church beyond the four walls because the pastor's already set the vision, but it's going to take a group. It's going to take the church coming together in unity and saying, you know what, pastor, I believe not only can we bring people into the church, but I believe we can bring the church to the people and we can see God do the miraculous in their home, on their street, in their grocery store. I believe that God... Is able. Hallelujah. Jesus heals a Gentile woman's possessed daughter in Matthew 15, 21 through 28, Mark 7, 24 through 30. Jesus heals a deaf and dumb man, Mark 7, 31 through 37. Jesus feeds 4,000 plus women and children, Matthew 15, 32 through 39, and Mark 8, 1 through 13. Jesus heals the blind man at Bethsaida, Mark 8, 22 through 26. Jesus heals a man born blind by spitting in his eyes in John 9, 1 through 12. Jesus heals a boy with an unclean spirit in Matthew 17, 14 through 20, Mark 9, 14 through 29, Luke 9, 37 through 43. Miraculous temple tax found in a fish's mouth, Matthew 17, 24 through 27. Jesus heals a blind and mute demoniac, Matthew 12, 22 through 23, and Luke 11, 14 through 23. Jesus heals a woman who had been crippled for 18 years, Luke 13, 10 through 17. Jesus heals a man with drops, dropsy on the Sabbath, Luke 14, 1 through 6. Jesus cleanses 10 lepers on his way to Jerusalem in Luke 17, 11 through 19. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in John 11, 1, John 11, 1 through 45. Jesus restores sight in Matthew 20, 29 through 34, Mark 10, 46 through 52, and Luke 18, 35 through 43. Jesus heals a servant, servant's severed ear while he's being arrested in Luke 22, 50 through 51. And the second miraculous catching a fish transpires in John 21. 4 through 11. Just a couple days ago, on Easter Sunday, we came together and we remembered what transpired on that Sunday morning. We remembered our Savior who was beaten bruised, broken, cut open, spit on, laughed at, accused, hung on a cross, died, and he rose again. And Jesus returns after three days of being buried. And you can read about this in Mark 16, verses 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, This is Jesus charging his disciples after he's come back to them and said, Here I am. Go into all the world and preach to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, 
he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. God has charged you the day that you received him, the day that you took on Christ, he charged you with this calling. It's up to you to preach in your community. It's up to you to proclaim Jesus where you live. And God is going to work with you. He's not going to give you a job and not equip you with the tools to get the job done. I know some of us may have different characters about us. Some of us are very vocal. Some of us know no stranger. Some of us are very meek and mild. You're looking at someone who, as a young boy, would never dare dream of standing up in front of one person and talk, let alone however many is here tonight. But can I tell you tonight that no matter your demeanor, no matter your character, no matter what you think that you're incapable of, God is going to work with you if you will accept the call. Because it's a calling that God has given to every one of us. It's a calling that God has placed upon every saint, every child. Go into the world and you preach. You preach about me. You preach about what I can do. And I'm going to work with you. And there's going to be signs that are going to follow you. John 14 verse 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that he believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also. And he didn't stop there and he said, And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Greater works than these. I've read to you 36 recorded miracles that Jesus did. 36 different, some of them may be the same in aspects, but 36 different recordings that Jesus performed. And yet he says, if you believe in me, if you'll believe that I am he, not only will you do what I have done. When I, I know we've heard it. If you've been in the church any time, you've heard it all your life. Greater works than these shall. But what were the works that he was talking the, These 36 works right here. That's what he was talking about. He said, not only are you going to do these works, if you believe on me, but greater works. You know what that says? That right there? You ain't seen nothing yet? Because miracles have transpired in this place. I'm sure I could ask you to lift your hand if God has worked a miracle in your life or you know of someone that God has worked a miracle in their lives. I'm pretty sure almost every hand in this place could be raised. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Because there's greater works that God is calling us to do. There's greater works that he's calling you to do. You just have to be in position to believe that God, if you said it, if you said I shall do these works and greater works, then I'm going to believe that your word is true. But how can I do this? Acts 1 and 8 but says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You've been endued with power. It's not a power that can be attained by man, that can be controlled by man. It's a power that only God can give. It's a power of the Holy Ghost. And I prompt you tonight, if you haven't received the power of the Holy Ghost, if you haven't allowed yourself to not leave this place, 
to not leave this house if you're not 100% sure that you have the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you. Because God forbid. You see, I read to you and made mention of 37 miracles that Jesus did. I'm sorry, 36. But there's a 37th recorded miracle in your Bible that I wanted to leave specifically for the end because I want to make sure that everyone in this place has the opportunity to make sure that they have prepared themselves, that they have allowed God to, to reside on the inside of them like he wants to. Because the last recorded miracle in your, in your Bible, not the last, but the one I left for last, is Jesus curses the fig tree on the road to Bethany. In Matthew 21, verses 18 through 22. In Mark 11, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, And on the morrow, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat, no man eat fruit of this hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. I don't want Jesus to come and to see me, Baron. You can come to the music. I'm not trying to leave this on a low note. I just want to give you the opportunity, and I want to challenge the mindset of the world. Challenge the mindset that some people may have that I have all the opportunity and chances I at my disposal to really be what God wants me to be, to really see God do what He wants to do. I have all the opportunity. And friend, can I can I tell you tonight that that's not true? That's not so. Because God came to that fig tree looking for something to eat. He came there longing for something to curb his hunger. And as you're, as you're walking through life, your everyday busy lives, and I know life just gets busier and busier and busier. We have so many things, and our agendas are full, our calendars are full to the max, and we're stretched so thin. I remind you that God has charged you to preach Him. In your everyday life, He's charged you to spread His gospel. He's charged you to be a light. He referred to us as the salt, but if the salt loses its fate, its savor, what is it then? It's of none effect. I don't want a hungry soul. I don't want a hungry soul to come to me longing for something to curb their appetite. And they find that I have nothing to give. I don't want that to happen. Because I'm going to have to give an account one day, as we all do. Every one of us is going to stand before the, thro the, the judgment throne of God. And we're going to give an account for every action, every word spoken, every excuse, every question that we had of why, why, well, we're going to give an account. And are we going to allow ourselves to be barren in this hour? Are we going to allow ourselves to be so, so stre stretched thin with life 
when someone who's hungry and who's thirsty and they just they just need something and they don't know what it is they don't know where they can get it but here you are proclaiming to be his child here you are acting the part but you don't have the heart of God I'm speaking to everyone in this place myself included there has to be fruit when they came to the man begging at the gate he's asking for alms He said, such as I have, give I unto thee. And I know it's been said before across this pulpit, but you can't give what you yourself don't have. Oh, God. I don't want to be found fruitless in this hour. In this hour that God wants to do great and mighty miracles. In this hour that there's there's a world who's noticing that this thing's wrapping up. That this life that we know, it's, it's, it's coming to a close. Shantoro. Come on, you may think they don't realize. You may think that they think they have all the time left. No, there's people who's beginning to realize that, that life is beginning to, it's beginning to end. The life that we know, it, it's wrapping up. There's people who's waking up every day and they're realizing the signs and the times. And they're looking. They're looking for what they, they may not know. They're looking for someone, anyone that can just give them what, what, what it is that I long for. What is it inside of me? What is it inside of this body that is calling out? I don't know. We should stand up as the people of God and be honest with ourselves and say, God, it's been, it's been a while since I've had fruit bearing. It's been a while since there's been fruit that I'm able to give to someone who's hungry. Because when the disciples and Jesus came back in Mark chapter 11, 20 through 22, it says, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember it, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering him, answering him said unto them, Have faith in God. Folks, this is our hour. This is our hour. This is the church's hour. I'm not ending this on a, on, a, on a sour or a somber note. I've come to charge the church of the living God. This is your hour. If you want to get with the program, if you want to truly see the miraculous power of God, if you really want to see revival, would you stand to your feet? I'm not negating anything that God has ever done in this church or in your life. I'm not belittling it. I'm not saying that God hasn't done miraculous things in your life. I'm not saying that God hasn't done miraculous things through you. I'm simply here to tell you that you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Because if you think that is the totality of the power of the Holy Ghost and of God, you're mistaken, my friend. It should be on a regular that there are notable miracles in this place. But I'm too busy. I'm too wrapped up in things. I've got a life to live. Can I say to you, brother and sister, 
the life you should be living is in Him. Come on, I know we need to enjoy life. I know there's, there's things outside of the church. I'm not saying that, that we can enjoy and have fun and, and God's all for it. But the scales are imbalanced. And I'm not saying anything across this pulpit that I'm not, that I'm not preaching to Jeremy, Jeremy Howard right now. Because we all get caught up in life. We all make choices and decisions to do the things that we do. And we create a, a, a small portion of time for the things of God. How many hours are you actually here under the sound of the voice of the man of God? I know you come here three times a week and sometimes you have special events and services. And, and you've got to make room for that. And you're here and I'm not, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not bashing anybody in this place. I'm not trying to say that you're not trying. I know you're trying. But to truly see greater works there has to be a greater dedication to truly see the miraculous take place how God envisions it to take place it takes a deeper dedication it takes more time from your busy schedule it takes more effort it takes more prayer, more fasting than what you're doing already. But I know what God told me. I know what he said to me. That if my people would really dig in and would set their feet on me, that rock, that sure place, that place where God desires you to walk in. There's greater works that's going to take place in this church. There's greater moves of God that's going to transpire. There's greater outpourings of the Holy Ghost that's going to that's going to come. And if you truly want to see it, I ask you tonight to make a declaration within yourself to God. Because if you don't speak it into existence, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit. They shall eat the fruit thereof. If you will make a declaration to God tonight, a renewed dedication that says, God, I've seen you do miracles, signs, and wonders, but I know I ain't seen everything that you desire to do in my generation. If you'll just lift your hands and just make that dedication to God, 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 no, I may not be doing everything I can do. Uh, but oh, God, I'm coming to you tonight, Lord, to renew a dedication to you, Lord, for the purpose of your kingdom, to see greater works be done in my generation, to see greater miracles take place and transpire in my generation. God, I thank you for what you've done in years past. I thank you what you've done in this place and in this service. But that was yesterday. God, I've got to see more. God, you're no respecter of persons. You're no respecter of persons, Lord. You're able to do it through me. You're able to do it in my church. You're able to do it in my city. Oh, God, there should be a cry out tonight.
Come on, I feel like the Lord wants to see who's really in it. He wants to see who's really dedicated. He wants to see, are you really in it to see what you've never seen before? If you want to make your way up to the front, if you want to show God, I'm in it for the long haul. God, I'm here to see you do the miraculous. God, I'm here to see what I've never seen before. In your power.